Morning, everybody. Good morning. I hope you've all had a good week. If we're with the Lord, it's got to be a good week. It can't be anything else. Today, anointed, but not yet appointed. God anoints us, and God appoints us. That's not up for negotiation. That's how it is. We are chosen by God. And he tells us that in Scripture. Because anointed also means chosen. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. What a statement. He chose us. Not only did he choose us, he died for us. He carried our sins and our shame to that cross, and then said, he will look after us. I will never leave or forsake you. That is being anointed. Corinthians tells us, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. It's like the beginning of a race, isn't it? Ready, set, go. You can't go, go, ready, set, or set, go, ready. You have to do it in order. And God has his divine order. Ready. He makes us ready to answer his calling. When we have been in that pit for so long, he says, I'm going to call you now. And he makes us ready. And that's ready. Set. This is God preparing us for what he wants us to do. The divine plan he has for us. Go. This is when we are appointed. This is when we are appointed to start his plan, his plan for us. No one else can do the job God chose us to do. He picks each individual for a specific purpose, and they'll be used according to his perfect plan. Not our perfect plan because we don't have one. And he, it's his perfect plan because he knows us. He knows every bump, wart, and ball patch. He knows our fears, our sins, our secrets. And he tells us, I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Luke 5.32 God does not call those who think they are qualified. He qualifies those who he has called. And he works with the humble and the willing. Not the most impressive. What about the Pharisees? He didn't like the Pharisees. He don't be like the Pharisees in all their finery, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, with the little boxes of the law strapped to them, their fine robes shouting on the street corners in prayer to be seen. And as I was meditating on this, so much tumbled into my mind. And I know before you think of there's plenty of space for it, and there is. 
I thought I'd get that in first. Sometimes the appointing can come soon after the anointing. And if we look 1 Samuel 10, Saul was anointed, and within weeks, he was appointed to be king. But then he sinned and lost everything. But on the other hand, David, we see in 1 Samuel 16, 11, and Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him. Now he was ready with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him, for this is the one. So Samuel anointed him. And then he went on his way, Samuel. Choosing the most unlikely. The shepherd, the youngest, the lowly one. David anointed. But it takes between 13 and 15 years before he is appointed. And we see that in 2 Samuel 5. But during this period, he goes through all sorts of things. He's hunted, fighting, running for his life, hiding in a cave from Saul who wants to kill him. You can imagine the devil having a field day with this. De David hiding there. You can hear Satan whispering to him. In a cave, are we? Your God tells you you're going to be king. Yet here you are in a dark, damp cave, fearing for your life. How is that working for you? And this is what the devil does. In that space between anointing and appointing, he's there. But David was confident because he knew the Lord was ordering his steps. And we see that in Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Paul, anointed on the road to Damascus. It's only when he returned to Jerusalem, he was appointed. appointed. His appointment was to the Gentiles, and we see that in Acts 22, 21. Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. Again, we see Paul is anointed. Then shortly after, he's fleeing for his life. He, he had to be lowered out of the city. Look at all the anointed and appointed. Moses, Abraham, Noah, all the prophets, the apostles. Anointed and appointed by God not by themselves, and their lives were hard, full of danger, hungry, stone starved, beaten, shipwrecked, some executed, all for the love they had for God and for building his church. They didn't have private jets. They didn't have fancy churches that looked like stadiums, thousand dollar suits, the bottom line is, being anointed and then appointed is the entrance to true servanthood. Nothing else. There's a space between the anointing and the appointing, as we've seen. It could be weeks, it could be days, it could be months, it could be years. It's his fun, not ours. And yes, he will speak to us. He'll say, I've got work for you in this field, whatever that field is. But when he tells us that, that's not the green light to go charging off. He'll tell us when to go charging off. 
But we're going to be fired up. You Christians, or all the Christians, raring to go. But we have to walk in this space while God chips away at us. It can be difficult. Let's have a look at Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. And it goes on. This is the space where we're waiting. You know what? If it was my job, if it had been my job, or is still my job, to chip away at me, I would have thrown the towel in a long time ago. I would have gone, what? Again, it's too much hard work. But God doesn't, he carries on. Years ago, I was a new Christian. I was so not fit to be able to stand here and speak this, like this, God's word. Just one example. I could have written a book. Road Rage for Dummies. I used to get out of my car in the middle of traffic. Didn't matter how much traffic. Trying to go at anyone who I thought had done me wrong. And it was only by God's love and God's grace that I was never hit by a car or beaten to death by irate drivers. But God ships away at us. He gets rid of that baggage. Trouble is, we're human and we pick it up again. In this space we're walking, we need to get rid of it. Put it down, leave it there, forget it. When the breaking and remaking started in my life, it was like, wow, it hurt. It hurt. And, and sometimes you're indignant, it's like, who, me? You cannot be talking about me, that's somebody else. No. But now, I see the change, and I've seen the change. And now correction becomes a joy. But why does it become a joy? Because I have the realization he loves me above measure to keep working on me. And he does, he loves us above measure to keep working on us, keep chipping away. Another thing we're tempted to do in this waiting space, this waking, walking space, is to say, God told me. God spoke to me. God put it on my heart. He will have. I don't doubt that. But he hasn't given us a green light. And we will jump the gun just like they do in a race, and we'll get disqualified. And what we mustn't do is weaponize God's name. God told me. How many times have we heard that? We only end in tears, using God's name like that. There was a man, every Sunday, he would stand in the center it had to be the center. And you say, God spoke to me. I don't have a problem with that. Then every week, God spoke to me. But it was always on a Thursday. Then I start thinking. Then he adds, God calls me by my nickname. Then I've got to think. 
Yeah, God will speak to us. Did he not use a donkey to speak to uh, Balaam in Numbers 28? Numbers 22, 28. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? We've got to make sure it's God's voice speaking to us. Not our voice, our egos wanting to start too soon. Or the devil's voice. Because when the Lord has a plan for us to do great things, the devil also has a plan for us not to. And then, if God, somebody comes to you and says, God's told me to do this in your life. God will have also told you of that event as well. And we see that in Acts 9, when Saul, as he was, was hit by the Lord, and he went to the house in Straight Street, three days, blind, fasting, praying, and God told him, I'm bringing somebody to you called Ananias. And God told Ananias, go to Paul. So there was confirmation. They both knew what was happening. So that's something else we have to bear in mind. We might say we're anointed, but not appointed. So what now, we ask? The first thing to understand is we have been chosen. There is a destiny. There is. There's an end game. There's a destiny there. But it might not feel like it when we're in that space. But the Lord is directing our steps as shown in Psalm 37. By sight or by faith, we need to be smoothed out. We need to be taught, broken, remade, remodeled, made ready for the work God has set out for us to do. And scripture tells us, many are called but few are chosen. And that's true. Because some people don't hear God's voice. Some people may hear his voice and think the job is too hard. Then the, if that's the case, their Christian life needs adjustment. And their outlook to Christian life needs adjustment. There are a few things we need in this space, in this walk. We need to be confident and leave everything in God's hands. Not take it back. And we all do it, I've done it, give it to God, take it back again because we're impatient. We need to be humble. We need to be a servant. We need to be teachable. We need to have discernment. And we need to be sure it's God talking to us, not our ego, and not Satan, because that is going to happen. Because we're impatient, we'll convince ourselves, God said, I must start now. And then it all falls apart, and you wonder why. It's our walk with God. What, what did he say right at the beginning? Right at the beginning. So let me go back to that scripture. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That's our walk. We need to be fruitful. Doesn't it tell us they shall be known by their fruits? Not their failures. 
So in this, <clears throat> excuse me, in this space where people are, we are, sometimes when we've been given a task, yet we've not been given the go-ahead, we need to trust in the Lord. We need to have patience. And when we are appointed to a task by the Lord, yes, it's an honour and a privilege. But bear in mind, it can also be an extremely hard road. And if we don't get rid of ourselves and have more of Christ in us, we're not going to be able to walk that road. And we're not going to be able to complete that task. And when that happens, we start losing our life in Christ. God will choose us to do things he wants us to do. He will make sure we are capable of doing those things. The problem is, do we have the confidence? We need to have the confidence. We should have the confidence because we trust in the Lord. Our lives are run by the Lord. So remember, we can be appointed, uh, sorry, anointed, but it may take weeks, days, or months before we are appointed. And when we are appointed, it's not a big shiny badge or a gold star. It is the entrance to servanthood. And that's where we should all be. Amen. Amen.